Good morning. So where we stopped was with uh, Ra saying goodbye as the geese flew away. And the next chapter is the winter. It was so good talking to all of you this morning about how you're reading the second book already. It was super exciting. So let's just get back to this one. Chapter 54, The Winter. The island was quiet. Did you notice that when you're reading these books that each of the first sentences is written a little bit different than the re differently than the rest? So it's in italics. Italics, they're called. So Peter Brown and the publisher, they decided to do that because it's like poetry, really. It says, The Winter. The island is quiet. That's a poem. Okay. The migratory birds had all left, the hibernators were asleep, and everyone else had begun their simpler winter routine. Everyone but Roz. Now that she was alone, a robot didn't know what to do with herself. It's kind of like what's happening right now. We don't know what to do. So it's like we all of a sudden have to think, okay, we have to do something. Okay. So... She stood in her gray garden and watched a sheet of ice slowly form on the pond. Sometimes she could hear her good friends, the beavers, going about their business beneath the ice, and she wondered when she would see them again. Ross stood there until snowflakes started drifting down from the sky. The flakes swirled in the breeze and slowly piled up on the ground and on the trees and on the robot. So she crouched into the nest, slid the stone door behind her, and sat in darkness. Hey, you know what that's kind of like? That's hibernating. Hours and days and weeks went by without the robot moving. She had no need to move. She felt perfectly safe in the nest. And so in her own way, the robot hibernated. Roz's body relaxed. Her quiet whirring slowly stopped. Her eyes faded to black. And she probably could have spent centuries like that, hibernating in the total darkness. But the robot's hibernation was suddenly interrupted when a shaft of sunlight fell upon her face and carried energy back to her empty battery. Remember, we had to remember that that's how she gets her powers from the sun. She's solar powered. She, Roz's body tensed. Her quiet roaring slowly started. Her eyes began to glow. I like this. When you look at the book, see how it goes like this. Right there, her body relaxed, her body tensed. Her quiet whirring slowly stopped. Her quiet whirring slowly started. Her eyes faded to black. Her eyes began to glow. Hello, I'm Rosam, Unit 7134, but you may call me Roz, the robot said automatically. Hmm. That's exactly what she says when her button is turned on and off. You have to put that in her. Remember that. When all her systems were up and running again, Roz noticed that she was surrounded by broken branches and piles of snow. The roof of the nest had caved in, and the lodge was now flooded with light, with sunlight. Roz felt more energized with each passing minute, but she also felt cold. Her joints felt stiff and brittle, and her thinking was slow. So she got up, cleared a spot on the floor, and made a fire. The snow inside the nest began to melt, and the robot sensors began to thaw, and when she was ready, she climbed out through the hole in the roof and into a bright foreign landscape. So Roz also needs warmth, like not just the sun, but like even more warmth than just the sun in the wintertime. And here's a picture of her walking out. That's a lovely picture. That looks very snowy. The world Roz had known was now covered in a thick layer of snow. The tree limbs bent to the ground and under heavy sleeves. The dark pond was now pure white. The only sounds were Roz's own crunching footsteps. Faint wisps of steam curled up from the robot's body as she trudged through the forest. Roz plunged a hand into a lump of snow and pulled, out, pulled up a long stick. She snapped it in half and flung both pieces back to the nest. She took a few more steps and picked up a fallen tree. She hacked it into smaller pieces and flung them back as well. And then she reached down to another snowy shape. But what she pulled up was not a piece of wood. It was Dart the Weasel. He was frozen solid. Ross stared at his stiff body for a moment, then decided it was best to leave the poor thing where he was. 
As the robot continued gathering wood, she found more victims of the cold. A frozen mouse, a frozen bird, a frozen deer. Had all the island animals frozen to death? No, not all. There were a few fresh tracks in the snow. Now, you know, I didn't know about the weasel, about the frozen solid, until I got to the sentence or the question, had all the island animals frozen to death? So does that mean that Dart the weasel is dead? As we know, the wilderness is filled with beauty, but it is also filled with ugliness. Yeah, I'm afraid so. That's the bitter and the sweet. These are the mixed, the life and the other side of it, the death. Mm. It's hard to hear, children. It's hard to hear. It's hard to read. That winter was ugly. A devastating cold front had swept down from the north. Oi, the things from the north. And it brought dangerous temperatures and huge amounts of snow. The animals had prepared for winter, but nothing could have prepared the weaker ones for these long nights when the temperature plummeted and the wind whipped over the island. I know that this is the ugly part, but there's also something good here because Roz is programmed to grow things and to take care of things. I think there's going to be a solution in this. Let me find out. Roz returned to the nest where the fire had melted the interior snow to a muddy soup. She took a minute to warm her body by the flames, and then she began the repairs. She patched up the hole in the dome with a lattice work of branches before adding a layer of mud and snowfall uh, uh, and leaves, and soon the repairs were complete. But another snowfall may... I'm sorry, let me just start the sentence again. But another snowfall might cave in the nest all over again. So Roz decided to keep a fire going day and night to prevent snow from building up on the roof. The robot brought in, a lo in load after load of firewood, and each time she went outside, she was reminded of the frozen weasel and the mouse and the bird and deer. How many other frozen animals were hidden beneath the snow? Before going in for the night, she called out to whoever was listening. Animals of the island! You do not have to freeze! Join me in my lodge, where it is safe and warm. Safe and warm? The lodgers. And do you know what lodgers means? That's in the next chapter. Okay.